does work. Yes. Right. Can you no, hear? Not very well. Well, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think okay. it's better than my well, I'll leave just in case. Okay. Well, hello everybody, and I'm very sorry that we have the usual representation of the other side, whose uh, <laughs> whose purpose in life is to come and disrupt meetings. Yes. Yeah. So we're not going to allow that to happen uh, because really it's very pathetic. And I know Mr. Hoffman very well, who he seems to feel it's his job to go and disrupt meetings. Um, so we mustn't allow him to do that, and we're not going to listen to anything he says. Um, now, uh, the, the, the question that I was asked, what is Israel an apartheid state? You know, I'm terribly tempted to say yes, and then that's the end of my speech, because it's so self-evident that in a way we don't need to discuss it. Now, my two, the two previous speakers have been wonderfully eloquent. They've given you uh, really very much uh, what I was going to say. I don't know that I have anything very new to add, except, of course, uh, as, the, as the chairman said to you, I am uh, uh, the one person on the panel who is actually a Palestinian, who was ethnically cleansed in 1948 when we lost our home in West Jerusalem, which is where I was born. So I know an awful lot from a personal point of view about what the establishment of this state meant um, for me and hundreds, and thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of other Palestinians. Not only was I and my family ethnically cleansed from our home in 1948, we were never allowed back. <coughs> That's the issue. That's really the issue. That Israel was allowed to get away with um, doing that, not, not just making sure that the population of Palestine left or was expelled, but ensuring that they never returned. And the fact that, as Ken so eloquently said, this disgraceful, appalling state of affairs was allowed to happen and to continue is down very much indeed to those powers in our world which could have pressured Israel and can still pressure it now to abide by the norms uh, of international law and common decency and humanity. Uh, I was reading an article in, in Haaretz, the Israeli daily Haaretz, just today actually, and was struck by uh, a, a piece about uh, the forthcoming meeting between the Israeli Prime Minister, <coughs> Benjamin Netanyahu, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, US President, uh, President Obama, on the 5th of March. And this article was uh, agonizing itself over the question of war on Iran. Was this something that the two leaders would discuss? How would they discuss it? And and describing or commenting on the fact that they have a problem because Obama doesn't like Netanyahu and Netanyahu can't stand Obama, but they both need each other. So in fact, the US president, it said, had no way of being able to really control the situation. Really? Really? The US, which funds and supports Israel in every single way, really? It has no weapons against Israel? Isn't that fantastic? All that the US president has to say to the Israeli prime minister is, if you attack Iran, all aid from the US to you, to your state, will stop. And you know what? Israel won't attack Iran. It is as simple as that. So really, the problem we have, as, 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 as you've heard, is that we not only have to deal with this state, but we have to deal with the fact of cowardly, cowardly um, uh, 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 states in our world which cannot, uh, dare not, take Israel and sort it out. And that's exactly what should be happening. Okay, is Israel an apartheid state? Well, I, I would have thought that just on the basis of Israel's treatment of the Palestinian people, that uh, the answer is very clear. Because what you see the Israelis have managed to do is to treat, to behave towards the Palestinians 
as if they were a subhuman species. Now, it's a very clever thing to do, because you know very well, you can maltreat people so long as you dehumanize them and make them into nothing. So the fact that you kill them, that you imprison them, and so on, doesn't have the same impact, because they're already subhuman. And if, in addition to that, you, as Israel, have succeeded in converting the whole of the people of Gaza into terrorists, I mean, nobody, uh, 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 in fact, if you think about it, so many people, when they think about, about Gaza, immediately think of Hamas, and Hamas are terrorists, and the people therefore support Hamas, and therefore the people are terrorists. And therefore, the fact that they have white phosphorus bombs uh, thrown on them, the fact that Israel, between t at the end of 2008 and the beginning of 2009, killed 1,400 mostly civilians in Gaza, you know, it's one of those things that happen. Why? Because the people of Gaza are not fully human. That's the point. Now, if you think about that, if the Palestinians were regarded as fully human, would it be possible even to imagine that any uh, outside agency would accept the behavior towards Palestinians that you can see every day going on in the West Bank? Uh, as as, as um, um, Jenny Tong uh, described, as Ken described in Gaza, the way that people can't move about even their own pathetic cities because of checkpoints. The fact that women give birth at checkpoints because if their babies die, tough, that's good. That's another Palestinian bond. The fact that patients regularly cannot access treatment in Israel, why? Because they are denied the permission to go to Israel. These, everybody knows this. Think of it. How could that ever happen? Except if you thought that the people to whom this was happening are not really people like you and me. They are not people like us. So, so what? It doesn't matter. These things happen. Okay, so we heard about the bypass roads, you know about that only Israelis can use in the West Bank. You know about the wall. You, you also know that uh, 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 the, uh, the cars in, uh, in Israel, in Israel, expanded Israel, uh, including the occupied territories, are demarcated by the color of the number plate. If you have a yellow number plate on your car, you are uh, an Israeli or have that car, you've taken it, you've got it in Israel. And if you have a white number plate, you are a Arab, an Arab from the territories, and you cannot get into Israel. There are things you cannot do. And on and on it goes. Um, now, uh, the reason I think that Israel can get away with being um, an apartheid state is also one of perception. You see, um, the Israelis have been able to get away with this on the basis of the fact that apartheid as a system is not written into the law of the state. So in other words, you can't, as unlike South Africa, where it was actually in the law, it was founded on law, it is not in Israel. That's a very, very good way of disguising what's really going on. Because if you say, and you will hear very much from uh, people on the other side, you will hear this all the time. What do you mean apartheid? They've got members of parliament. Arabs in Israel can elect can have elect their own representatives. There are Arab members of the Knesset. Uh, what are you talking about, they say? Uh, Arab citizens of Israel have equal access to the law. All of that is correct. Okay. They can. But they can. But the important thing is, you, is that you have to actually look further. What's happening? Filming. People in the back. Okay, I have apologies for this uh, delay. Is there anyone in this room filming who yes. shouldn't be? Yes. yes. Can you point to them, please? You know, just give it to One is there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you have been told that there will be no filming tolerated. I'm not quite sure how hard that is to understand. But I am 
quite clean to uh, get rid of cameras if you need to. Thank a bit you. like, like Garza here. Yeah, very funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, back to you. Okay, now let's give that another, another diversionary tactic. Another one. Okay, um, I'm afraid it doesn't change the fact. That's what people don't, our friends here don't seem to understand. It doesn't change the facts. However much you divert uh, people's attentions, whatever 